This, this, this is Trans Africa Radio. News, views, reviews, and interviews, and everything you've come to expect on this side of the equator. Hang out with my guest. His name is Yao Yami. Yami, how do I pronounce his name? Swana. That's right. Swana. Yami Swana. Swana. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're talking about your book called Cheese Boy. And uh, of course, the co- topic of conversation today is thank you for my freedom. Now, what should I do with it? Of course. Wow. Yeah. What do we do with it? To be honest, when I started working, I didn't really see the impact of my vote. Yeah. Apart from being able to walk around and be free and have white friends. Uh, but when it came to the real story, which it always comes down to in every struggle, which is the money. Let's chill it. It's eh? always the money. You know? It always comes down to who's in charge of the resources. Yeah. It, it, it hasn't always been money. Uh, you know, in the times of uh, the Vikings, etc., it was about gold. It was about land. It was about uh, people, human capital, all those kinds of things that really allow you to have um, a life. Yeah. So, you know, uh, and, and really, I'm, I'm, I'm really asking that question is, now that I'm here, now that my dad has uh, been involved in the movement, my grandmother was involved in the movement, what is the next step for me? Let, so, let's, take it, let's, take, let's take it two steps back because I think it's very sure. important for us to, to sort of um, give it a nice background Yes. Um, as mm-hmm. to why you start asking these questions, right? Mm-hmm. So you and I share sort of a similar parts mm-hmm. in our lives in that we both, you know, raised in a township sure. um, by our grandparents mm-hmm. and our parents were quite young when they had us. So we were, you know, playing around with, with Ukoko as the, 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 the primary parent. Yeah. And then we found ourselves white friends. Um, hi, Conrad. Um, <laughs> and now we get into the corporate world and... Sure. For the first time in your life, you you start actually seeing the divisions. I mean, I, I used to be the biggest advocate of, of equality, saying, you know, mm-hmm. my mom would come home and say, you know, that Indian boss of mine. Yeah. And I'd be like, but why why is the Indianness even part of the of the equation? And for you know, sure. that, that Afrikaans boss of mine. And only after being in corporate for, for a while did I realize where um, the race dynamics even play themselves out in the workplace. Mm-hmm. I had the unfortunate incident where a colleague was um, you know, she sat behind me and she would write emails to the boss about how loud, how loud we were. Oh, yeah. Um, as as mm. the brown folk in, in the office. And that became, to, okay, this is what's happening. This is happening all over again, only I'm now allowed to vote. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's a tough one for... Uh, for for a, a person of color in this yeah. country, to to try and do anything um, economically. I mean, yeah. if, if I remember uh, my parents, uh, I'll, I'll give you my parents' side and my side, my, my personal experiences, but. Mm. Uh, my father for, was part of the BE deals, you know. Yes, all of a sudden you can get shares in yeah. these awesome, you know, <laughs> uh, companies, etc. Um, but, I mean, at the time, there were a lot of initiatives with mining companies. I'm yeah. not sure you guys are familiar with yeah. Af- 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 Afli's Gold. They, they had an co- uh, operation called Uranium One. And my parents were out there. They're these young black uh, people. Uh, my father had an MBA. My mother was al- also had a degree, highly educated, great track record. Uh, he had been an entrepreneur, etc. So, I mean, he's perfect. Uh, as a perfect candidate to be involved. BE partner. Exactly, to be you know, a BE partner. But I mean, it took them 15 years while dividends are being paid. Now, they're supposed to get paid dividends, right? As BE partners as they come in. All the white partners got, got dividends. For 15 years, he didn't get one. Not white. even a cent. So he missed out on 15 dividends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for 15 years. So, I mean, it's tough when you're a black person, you're educated, you're trying... Um, there's so-called uh, affirmative action. It's not real affirmative action, um, and 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 essentially, you know, um, the 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 so-called white person still controls everything in the economy. Yeah. And then on my side, when I started out as a financial advisor, the way that I got became a financial advisor was because I started a blog called Wolf and Looper, which was an education platform to teach people about how to invest money, save money, and uh, become entrepreneurs, start yeah. a business, etc. And that blew up. Uh, we got uh, 10,000, over 10,000 impressions per month back in 2014. Which was and, huge because yeah. back then data cost 5 billion rand. Exactly. And uh, <laughs> only four people had an iPhone. <laughs> exactly. You know, and I mean, uh, SAB Kickstart gave us some money. We were on third. We got a whole bunch of PR. We were featured on First Company etc and um, even then I got picked up and I got a commission job okay I didn't even get a salary a commission I got a commission in other words I had to sell something in order to get money okay alright so I mean I, need to, I needed to find money for petrol I needed to find money for marketing and this was a big this was with a big uh, um, um, uh, uh, financial advisory company the top four insurance companies in the country yeah 
I'm a superstar. At least I thought I was a superstar. <laughs> okay, I'm in YFM. I'm this hot shot. I got the biggest personal finance blog for young people in the country. Yeah. Um, You're getting 10,000 yeah, impressions. You know, I'm getting 10,000 impressions. Uh, you know, so-and-so wants to advertise on a platform, etc. But I get into this job and I get hit in the face. When I started this job at the same time as several other young people, uh, uh, my, my white peers, and they started out, the next thing, the guy five, down, five years down the line, it's been uh, roughly, let's say, no, let's say three years down the line, they now up for having franchises in the business. Yes. I, I, I actually lost money. Uh, the contracts that I signed up actually uh, end up, ended up lapsing. Now, in insurance, what happens is that you've got to pay the money back. Okay. Uh, so if you sign up a deal and the client doesn't keep paying the premiums, because they give you a lump sum. Essentially, they loan you your commission, right? Oh, okay. So it's a loan. Okay, so Leroy comes in and signs <laughs> with, with Yummy, yeah. and I'm taking whatever insurance yeah. product, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you, let's say, you know, for us who are a number dyslexic, yeah. uh, you get 20% of the commission, yeah. right? Yeah. So if, if, my, if my yearly mm -hmm. um, premium would be 1,000 Rand, yeah. you get 200 Rand, yeah. but you get it up front, yeah. hoping that Leroy continues paying his exactly. premiums for the rest of the year for you to sort of screw mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So essentially, you know, as a as a black young yeah, person, how legal is that? I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, it, it, it's daylight robbery. How many debt? How many? How many mm -hmm. instruments of debt are you in? Because if you have 20 clients, because remember you work oh, on yeah. commission, right. and then 20 mm -hmm. clients come in and they take mm -hmm. life cover of whatever million rand, and you're getting 200,000 rand up front, uh -huh. you are sitting there potentially owing the company a million rand. Yeah, uh, it's a lot. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, to start out, uh, they gave me a salary, which wasn't a salary, which was also a loan. Okay. So when I left the company, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, you know, um, I, I'm sitting there. I've never had a serious debt in my life. I had a, like a cell phone contract yeah. uh, and gym membership. And now I'm, I'm, I'm left with this, uh, with this big debt, uh, uh, which I didn't know how to settle. Yeah. So, I mean, it was a big challenge. And, um, you know, you get in there. You've got your, your, your white counterparts. They, their parents can fund them. They give them cars. They give them networks. Literally, I've seen with, the, with, with, with our counterparts where their father will say, hey, Robert, Alan, screw your financial advisor you had for the past 20 years. You're going to sign up with my son. Yeah. And I mean, the guy's got uh, 2 million bucks in a year. Uh, and obviously, once you got two million, you, you put a million back into the business, and you keep cycling that money. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it's easy for someone that's 25 years old with the right kinds of networks to be a multi-millionaire in five years. Let, let's go back a so, step. Let's go back a step. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting quite warm right now because because so so here yeah. so we need to figure out where this went wrong. Sure. Um, because sure. in the very same way, I, I mean, I was having a conversation last week, and I was saying that for me, it is ludicrous the fact that I can as a, a black under 30 um, mm -hmm. male, it's easier for me to get vehicle financing for a Golf 7 GTI sure. than it is for me to get a 300,000 Rand loan for a home. Sure. It is crazy for me that I can't get 300,000 Rand capital finance for mm. me to venture capital finance for me to go out and do a, start a business which will potentially employ mm. everyone in this room and there's mm. about six of us in the room, five of us in the room um, and, and impact at least five other families. Sure. It, it is more difficult for me to do that yeah. yet it is so easy for you to put me into debt and perpetual debt because when I started off working as a lawyer before I had even seen my salary <laughs> yeah, I yeah. had a, an offer letter that told me how much I'd be earning. Mm. I went to a dealership here in Bramfontein called How field mm -hmm. and I got myself a shiny spanking new VW. Yeah. When I got into the VW, they said to me, Mr. Danzi, do you know that you can get a multimedia system in it? Don't you want to watch DVDs in your car? Oh, yeah. And obviously, sure. I'm like, <laughs> of course. Who does not want to watch Arnold Schwarzenegger at the yeah. robot? Yeah. You sure. know, and, and mm -hmm. how is it, where, where did that go wrong? In, in your view, where did that go wrong for us to be able to make, because you're not making the bad financial decisions yourself. It's just we have no guidance. Yeah. Because remember also, you and I are possibly the second generation, sometimes the first, of the people who went to a varsity sure. who have the access to white people on an equal level. And I use sure. equal very loosely. Yeah. Um, where we have those dialogues. And already I'm sitting with, you know, hundreds of thousands of rands mm -hmm. in debt for getting things like student loans, sure. uh, the black tax, mm -hmm. and, and all of that. Where did that go wrong? I mean, it... it, it, it Who do we blame? Whose fault is it? I, I would have to blame my parents. Yeah. Uh, in as much as they've done a lot of good stuff for us, and, and my, my dad is an absolute warrior. I think... Okay, let me put it to you this way. On my side, I think I'm... I am I am an anomaly. I'm an outlier. Okay. For 99% of the people, they've gotten bad advice, financial advice, okay. from their grandparents and their, and, 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 and their parents. I mean, a simple thing, um, 
uh, like um, um, for example it's more important to produce an income okay than it is for you to monitor your expenses yes my grandmother taught me that she says focus on selling get clients get customers uh, focus on doing more work if you can't get if you're not in a sales position you're working for someone focus on how, what else can you do in the company to get more money in yeah the expenses are going to be there you're not gonna you have to live you need a place to stay but everyone else is like hey you need to save and invest saving and investing only works for people that have money if you don't have money and you're struggling to pay rent or you're struggling to take care of your kid you can't invest yeah so it starts with income and my grandmother taught me that 100 look for many ways for you to make money at the end of the day if you want like i mean my grandmother i don't even know how many what's her job title yeah she's a salesperson she makes clothes she's a she's in agriculture uh she's doing this she's 80 years old she turned 80 year, last year she's doing all these things at 80 you know she's we are lima like she's there with the hoe in the fields and then she takes the the produce that she makes and she sells it yeah she's also a dressmaker traditional clothes yeah so she does that at night at 80 and i'm 24 and i can't do it <laughs> you know what i mean yeah so 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 she works hard and focuses on how much money do I need to make? And she does obviously, you obviously do need to control spending. I mean, yeah. you can't spend like a, a, a complete idiot, but there's only so much saving you can do. Yeah. Focus on making an income. And most people are like, okay, get your job and keep that job. Stay secure. Ma- try manage your expenses. Don't expand. Don't try to do something else. Don't take initiative at work yeah. to, to maybe do something else. If you were a lawyer, for example, you were a lawyer, maybe you found out that maybe one of your rich friends um, uh, uh, his father is going through a litigation and they need a lawyer that's a commission for you yeah they, you didn't need to do additional work see so, so, you so, understand so, what I'm saying so, 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 so I agree with you with, 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 with diversifying as much as you can sure. and also keeping as many income streams coming in I mean I'm a freelancer right now and I sure. work I work more jobs than I can actually remember because mm-hmm. you know <laughs> Freelancing, sure. Um, but but here lies my question to you, then, Yami, because it's all good and well because your mm-hmm. grandmother has been equipped with the skill. Okay, her generation of people were in agriculture. She knew that you know yeah. umamotungayo uh, in the community yeah. is a real thing. Sure. Um, you know, we we sure. have all those job titles, so it's great because she knew what avenues to go into. But mm-hmm. now move into a generation above that. Our parents, yeah, they. My mom to date, I think we're the only country uh, in the world that still advocates for us to. Get, 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 get. Yeah. So it's no longer a matter of, you know, you, you, it's crazy. You buy a car and we, 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 we buy the best car we, we, we possibly can. Mm-hmm. Not realize that a car like a cell phone gets dated. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. In, mm-hmm. in five years time, you will have to replace your car. Sure. No matter how great your BMW 10,000 is, mm-hmm. you'd have to replace it. Mm-hmm. So then it becomes a continual cycle. Of course. And no one says to you, hey, Yami, once you buy a car, you must know that for every year of your life, Mm-hmm. You must always have 10%, 7% of your salary that's going to go to paying off a vehicle. Of course. And then, but with John and Yaku and all my other friends, they don't need that because, mm. hey, listen up, dad bought you your car. So that expense doesn't exist for you at least for the next three years of sure. your working life. That means the 7,000 rand that you pay every month disappears into something else. You can put sure. it into business. And when you have to travel mm. and go down to Durban, guess who's paying? Mm-hmm. It's you. Mm-hmm. So where where does the divergence happen? Where 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 did we get it wrong from your sure. grandmother and us to maintain that that? Yeah. Because I mean I, I'd love to do a million jobs, says John in, uh, or Utabo in, in, sure. in the township. But Utabo was taught go to varsity. You're a lawyer now, lawyer. Yeah. Yeah, I would I, I would have to say um, again, it's it's just unfortunate. But it's 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 a chicken and egg story. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because when you look, when I look at uh, my white uh, my white counterparts and Indian counterparts, many of them uh, were already working in the father's pe- or mother's business from a yeah. young age. Yeah. So you there's no there's no like lesson that their parents have with each other. Like oh son, uh, this is how you they're actually on the ground practically at, at ten years old, yeah. twelve years old, pay, doing payroll, mm. cleaning the floors putting things in place, placing orders for stock, managing cash flow in a yeah. business. So these guys, they're leagues ahead of, by the time you're a credit controller, you're 25 in the normal course of things yeah. if you're a black person. Those guys started, what, 10, 
13 years earlier. Yeah. Now, I was fortunate that when I was, when I just got into university, my dad had all these board, uh, um, holding all these board memberships on companies, and he would send me if he couldn't go. Yeah. So I got to see, oh, this is how a board meeting is done. This is how an agenda is. So I, like, I, like I'm saying, I am an outlier. I'm not yeah. normal. But, and but you, you became comfortable in, exactly. in, in, in a boardroom setting. For sure. And also you, sure. you already came in with, with the soft skills required for you to be mm-hmm. a, a board member. Mm-hmm. Because again, another thing that we need to deal with is um, the fact that as a, uh, you know, what, what is the term they use in Cape Town? Uh, 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 the perfect black, the, yeah. the, 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 the right black. Yeah. Um, you, you need to learn certain things that I learned when I got into work the first year of work was horrid sure. because I had to sit in, 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 in meetings and I didn't know what it meant to take minutes sure. I didn't know what a minute looks like yeah. um, I, I wrote down everything I could possibly hear because I didn't know what to do sure. uh, the result was my minutes were 18 pages long when the secretary's minutes were a page and a half exactly um, but you got those soft skills already sure. So okay, so now let's 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 get back into cheese boy. So you, yeah. we, we got this. So you you now set yourself up. You are an outlier. Sure. You you've got these wonderful skills that your parents, thank goodness, yeah. were able to provide for you. You are one in a hundred. Sure. Um, the 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 document of cheese boy. Yeah. Okay. What? Why a document? What is happening with this document? Okay. So um, let's get into it. I mean, I just asked myself a question as we spoke a little bit earlier. That when I look at my dad at age twenty seven. Yeah. And I look at myself. At age 27 I'm going to be 27 this year Okay I look and I ask myself I looked at what my dad had achieved I mean my dad had already gotten his own place He was married He already had a kid He had his first kid I was around I was 7 years old Yeah Oh no Around 5 um, And I'm looking at myself I got no kid I am married um, uh, Congratulations but, uh, Thank you so much I appreciate that um, But I mean When I look at Even from a financial standpoint I'm nowhere near So I said to myself Jesus what is it that I've missed? Uh, what is it? And I, and I look at my cousins because my family generally we are well off. Yeah. Well off family generally. And I'm looking at them and I'm like, shucks, man. When our parents look at us, they must look at us like a bunch of losers. Uh, entitled, <laughs> lo- entitled losers. You know, entitled yeah. losers that come home and ask for this and ask for cars and ask for holidays and like you know, want, want, want. I'm saying, surely, uh, this is not what they envisaged for yeah. us. Uh, and I don't feel comfortable in this, uh, you know, and I, all, I've always had this knowing in me to say, flip, man, there's more that I can do. There's there's more. And obviously it resulted in, in, in um, because I wasn't 100 percent on the right path. It resulted in, in behaviors that were abnormal and that were un- unproductive. So the, the concept of Cheese Boys to say, let me give the elite of South Africa, particularly the black community to say, guys, Let's ask an intellectual question backed by a research company to say, okay, fine, this is the problem. Yeah. And um, these are some of the things that we can do to resolve this problem. And then let's look at qualitatively, we're looking at the people's emotions and feelings by doing an interview portion. Mm. Let's look at what people are thinking. What are the youth thinking about this? What are the old people thinking about this? So we want to combine the qualitative, emotional side of things and the quantitative side of things using a a very, um, partnering with a very strong research company to actually help us to come up with some of the answers. This is going to be an open-ended book. I don't think it's going to have the answer, but I want to start a conversation uh, amongst uh, amongst the elites, particularly black elites of South Africa, to say, hey, because uh, why elites? I don't want to leave people out, but I believe the elites are people that can do something. Yeah, they've got the resources. They've got the resources mm. and the connections and stuff to do something. So that's why I'm targeting them. But I, I'm really asking the question to say, guys, what can we do uh, to really ch- make a change? Because I look at countries like um, Singapore. Singapore was an island. Um, uh, with 60 nothing? years ago, with nothing, with a, an economy that was dependent on perishables, I think. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So rubber, they were, yeah. they were, they were, they were. Um, it was um, the the reason that Singapore came into existence was because of free trade. So people essentially they had no taxes. That's why people love to go to Singapore to trade. So that attracted all these traders, but then they also depended on Malaysia for rubber manufacturing. Okay, because they had no land, they couldn't grow rubber trees. So they would go and uh, plant the rubber trees in Malaysia, and then they, that rubber would be traded through Singapore. But in 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 essence, they really were just an island. There was nothing there, and they built nothing. They built that country up. They've got the same GDP as South Africa, okay, and they're the, they're smaller than Joburg. So this okay. is this is this is 
South Deng is the tiniest province in South Africa, mm-hmm. um, the most densely populated, mm-hmm. and Joburg is the most densely populated of that, but it's also the smallest city. Yeah. So it is ridiculous that you have a country as yeah. big as South Africa, which has nine other provinces of who course. are significantly bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that means that, you know, Soweto has four million people, so we're sitting, let's say, seven million people? Sure. At a stretch? Sure. sure. In a country with a GDP like the rest of the 55 million we have? Exactly. So I mean it's, it's it's ridiculous and and this is the this is the next shocking point. It took them 50 years to be the third easiest place in the world to do business. Five zero. Five zero. It, it, it doesn't take a hundred years, guys. We can do this in our generation. By the time I'm 70, South Africa could be as powerful as the UK, the entire United States, or Japan, or any other freaking yeah. country on this planet. So, I'm, I'm cheese boy is a statement to say. Black people, we can do something about this. Yeah, it's well within our capacity to do something. But now, so here, here, here's here's where my my fight comes in, uh, sure, uh, Ayami, sure. and 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 I agree with you. I think the the sure. uh, and maybe that's the problem, and maybe that's the problem that we have the wrong people sitting in the in the in the, in the corridors of power sure. who don't understand that's happening. Uh, Putu used to be the head of Shanduka Holdings, which are our deputy president. Uh, started off and it has mm-hmm. holding in virtually everything sure. um, uh, 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 as a young woman who went out and she branched off into, into entrepreneurship right of course, yeah. now if mm-hmm. I was sitting in cabinet and I was looking for a minister of um, trade industry development looky putty mm-hmm. real quick the issue is I think that we sitting with a with a with a an old set of, of employees in government, and yeah. I include that being the president because we're the employer. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. are the employer. Of course, yeah, uh, yeah. I agree with my you. tax and your tax mm-hmm. uh, employ them, and what they have done is they have killed us by withholding the knowledge. Because I mean, uh, I noted the fact you were saying yes, you know, you 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 were able to bridge the gap. Because you were put, unfortunately or fortunately, mm-hmm. in a place where you had to absorb this. Dad couldn't go to the board meeting. He yeah. had to go. Sure, sure, sure. Had to represent him. And you had to come back with a full, you know, yeah. uh, 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 report onto mm-hmm. what happened here, what happened there. And with an MBA graduate, I can tell you, he needs, oh, to, yeah. know. He needs to know where my money going. Yeah, uh, yeah. My, dad, my dad's a tough man. <laughs> yeah. He's a tough man. Which, mm-hmm. which, 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 which works in your favor. So, but mm-hmm. I'm, I mean, I sat here now and I was thinking, well, I don't even know. Um, exactly what happens in the corridors of power. I mean, I read the newspaper every day. I read several newspapers sure. every day. Um, but I can't tell you for the life of me uh, how it's possible, for instance, the question I've had for the longest time is, how do I have a minister of home affairs become a minister of finance? Mm-hmm. Because I know in my house that, you know, if my mom decided to make me buy the groceries, it would be havoc. We'd be having no lunch. Oh, There'd be course. no dinner. Of course. For at least a week. Yeah. Um, yeah. She did it uh, a few years ago. She went away and she gave my dad the task of buying the meat in the house. <laughs> we were having mints for a month. <laughs> we had bolognese, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> meatballs, we had it all. Sure, of course. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. But I mean, I don't understand still how it is mm-hmm. allowed in a framework like we have in our constitution. The Corporation of South Africa is then mm-hmm. led, the CFO is someone who yesterday was busy working with uh, documents in, in, sure. in, 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 in tourism and, and, and yes. home affairs. Yeah. And today he is holding the credit card, the the the, the, the nation's credit card in his in his hand. And I mean, as you say, that you know the conversation is we also are locked out of that conversation. Sure. So is it care deployment? Mm-hmm. Is it the fact that we need to take you know we we worked hard for this democracy. We're going to take our cut before you come sure. in. Or is it a matter of we just so oblivious because we're always fighting, crying about Jacob Zuma, Helen Zilla, mm-hmm. whoever mm-hmm. else it is, but actually not knowing or not interrogating, not the person, but the person that allowed them to be sure. in, 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 in the corridors of power. Because again, let's use Malusi Gaba as an example. Yeah. How on earth? Mm-hmm. How on earth? Now, mm-hmm. no, his capabilities aside, um, but he has a PA. Yeah, you know, and nothing on the BA, but when you're holding the purse strings of a country, of course, I have a bit of an issue with that. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think I think to answer the the first question, <clears throat> we've got a number of, of of various issues that we've got to deal with. The first one is obviously um, the current uh, leadership, I believe, um, is is really looking to uh, loot the country. Uh, they, they've got their own agenda, and and I feel like. Um, they're not really looking towards focusing on the actual mission. True. But right along at the same time, um, you starve yourself, which is the typical black person in power. You put a, you put a, you put a dog in starvation for, um, uh, for, 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 for a month, and you release that guy in a free-for-all buffet, he'll eat himself stupid, right? So I feel... He's not thinking about tomorrow. Yeah, there's no tomorrow. There's no planning. The guy just sees, oh my goodness, there's all these resources in front of me. So I, I, my heart goes out to the current uh, administration and I understand, you know, 
that uh, I mean it's happened to me before I remember I got a fairly large sum of money when I became 18 my cousins all my cousins told me I, I thought I'm gonna invest it um, all my cousins told me I wanna blow it mm-hmm. and I told them I'm gonna invest it I blew it <laughs> so so, <laughs> so 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 so, so I, I understand where they're coming yeah. from and, 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 and my heart goes out because it's not easy when you're sitting, sitting with billions of billions and you, all you need to do is just instead of paying the service provider you put in your banking deeds it's so tempting uh, when you're processing those payments so um, but at the same time in the same breath there's another issue so there's that issue that the guys are just absolutely yeah. hung in and going for it the other issue is um and I, and I know people are going to laugh. I got this from DJ Khaled. We're <laughs> the best. So, no, it's, you mean Ashad's dad? Uh, yeah, Ashad's dad. dad. Yeah. Oh, the drink was vocals come in yet? <laughs> so, anyway, no, <laughs> did the drink vocals come in yet? You know, no, but. Uh, <laughs> but um, he said something so. You're going to get me fired, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he said he, he, he's got. He, he said something so so positive they were talking about a beef there was a beef going on between Meek Mill and Wale yeah um, it was a very minor beef but he said their family Wale and and, 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 and Meek Mill are family it's yeah. MMG it's MMG we the best Rick Ross is gonna deal with them yeah. because they're brothers because you can argue with your sister you can argue with your brother but at the end of the day it's all good because we're family it's in the family it's in the family but then they fell for the trap and they kept beefing. Why? Publicity. Yeah. The U- the record labels, which is typically a white man, is saying, you guys beef because we're going to sell record sales. Beef equals publicity, publicity exactly. equals sales. Yeah. Right? But then you, you're compromising the long-term vision. And I feel like, and I'm not, I'm not trying to get all conspiracy theory, but I feel like black people have been pissed against themselves. I, I agree with you. I don't think it's a conspiracy theory, but I also believe that it is the easiest way to make people, mm-hmm. to control people, is to let them fight among themselves. Exactly. It is the old age, old question. Civilizations across the world, uh, time immemorial, have been doing it. Exactly. It's the easiest way to have you, because then I'm not involved. Mm-hmm. I put Sbo, and Sbo will fight with Yami, and I'll sit back, and then they will, will to each other, be collateral damage. At the very least, I only have to fight one of you. Exactly. Um, at, the, at the most, I have to fight neither of you, because you'll both kill each other. Exactly. And, and, and it works that way. And when we come back from the break, uh, I want to interrogate now, what do we do with the, the blind generation? But for now, uh, whew, a little bit nasty in there. Uh, from uh, All the way from Mozambique, she is my girlfriend. She doesn't know just yet. Her name is Lisa James. She comes with all for you on Charles Africa Radio. 872 on the DSTV Audrey Don't forget, we are also tradio.mobi in your pocket worldwide and international. So we fast forward to two generations later. We are reading sure. Cheese Boy and we are now telling the tale of yeah. Yami who was on trans Africa Radio with Leroy and he started this movement. Talk to me about what your ideal goal would be. If this goes as you plan it, if mm-hmm. all the things that you want to work, work just as you want them to, what would be the result and force of this? Okay, so the results of the publication and the docu- documentary series... Um, will result in, in, in massive uh, cash flow. Now, number one for our partners, all black partners. Um, I love black owned businesses. 100%. All black partners that we've got on board that we're commissioning for the project. Yeah. Um, so they're going to de- they're gonna definitely benefit from, from the financial output of this project. But it's mainly to invoke, um, I'm talking about the, the, the global or macro kind of impact. Um, it's definitely going to impact people's thinking yeah. and uh, spur people to, to, to action and awareness. For me, if I can get up, um, even if it's just 50% of, or even 20%, or even 10% of the South African black elites uh, um, to be aware that we're asking this question as young people. Yeah. No, no, no one over 40 or, or so came to me with this idea. I thought about it. I conceptualized it. Obviously, there were influences, but um, I, I'm the one driving it as a 27-year-old South African black male. So um, I want them to to be aware, at the very least, that there's this thing. And then, and I think um, at the end of it, I, I'm definitely putting it on my shoulders to then take it to the next level. Yeah. With regards to empowering more people and and, and move and being able to actually finance a business that can make an impact. I mean, blacks only own two industries in this country. One of them is uh, taxis. The other is soccer. Yeah. We don't own banking. We don't own um, telecoms. We don't own um, multimedia, which we're so good at. Yeah. Music. Presenting. Casper. 
We don't own it. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. You know what the so, crazy, you know what the crazy thing is. So uh, yeah. Me? It, well, the crazy thing about that is it, it, it's even even beyond that. You know, um, the 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 industry that we're really good at, and this is from across the continent. Mm. Um, we somehow I don't know what we're smoking, but we find some thrill in buying back stuff that belongs to us. <laughs> <laughs> so we will go. You will go to to, to sure, the, the sure. diamond walk in Santon, mm-hmm. and you will go pay eighty hundred thousand rand for a diamond ring, and with a mm-hmm. diamond and gold mined in South Africa. Sure, shipped off to Cartier in England or mm-hmm. in America. Mm-hmm. Bring it back, and then we'll pay triple the price for it. And we go. I'm wearing Cartier. Triple is an understatement. You know what I mean? It's more like a thousand times. Per yeah, worker. yeah. It's a thousand times. I think we need to emphasize three times is. is it's a thousand times. It's not. It's not. We. It's. We are being robbed blind as blacks, and and it looks like we like it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and, and and therein lies my issue because mm-hmm. again the conversation that happens. Mm-hmm. And I know I'm derailing you for a, a bit no, here. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, but uh, you know the conversation that happens is then we come here and we scream at the top of our lungs about how it's designer brands and we scream at the top of our lungs about how you know we're having fagua for dinner and you don't think about how many ways you could have done that for me the, the biggest lie ever told was the fact that you know uh, we 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 the, the the rand travels once in a black community mm-hmm. because i don't think it even travels once i think it so, travels half the way and then it stops somewhere there so, whereas in the jewish community it's 14 times of course so my one rand will go into 14 other jewish people's houses of course. before it leaves the community mm-hmm. Yet we are the biggest nation in the continent. We have the biggest numbers by far. Sure. We should own the industry. We should own the land. And that's a conversation for another day, Helen Zilla. Yeah. And, you know, but still, we sit here and we're still asking for scraps at the table. You know, and therein lies the question, did Nelson Mandela sell us out? Maybe he did. Look, uh, the, the question of Nelson, I think he had to do what he could do. Yeah. Um, there's, there's only so much you can do. Um, and I mean, the guy was in jail. For the majority of his life True. so uh, 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 to expect someone in that condition uh, physically he was not up to the task True. Uh, uh, he, he mentally he was not up to the task so a guy like Tabon Beggy up to the task yeah uh, he, he had the tools the mental capacity the physical uh, his body was intact in order to actually move things forward and True. which I believe he did um, I, I, which I believe he did to a, to a great extent yeah the ANC was was stronger than ever under his uh, under his um, leadership uh, the economic growth was at its best under his leadership so um, <clears throat> but I mean coming back to really the, the the issue at hand here is that we don't need to be at the table yeah blacks must stop wanting sc- to get even a meal or get featured in the buffet or to pick up the crumbs. We need to build a new building, a new table, our table. Yeah. Because the whites have their own infrastructure. You can't come in and and expect someone to... I'm actually, if I was in their position, had things been switched, there's no way that BE can come in and I'm going to give some young black person uh, who was my worker... Y- yesterday. To five years ago, yeah. to yesterday, and I'm going to give them even one percent of my company. No ways. So, so we need to understand that they will not give us anything. We need to build from scratch. We need to educate our people from scratch. Whether the people know how to educate or not, in Singapore when they started, they didn't know how to educate. Yeah. They didn't know how to build roads. They didn't know how to build an airport. They didn't know how to uh, do uh, R and D to build uh, technology, etc., uh, and investigate anything. The point is that we have to come in with the will and the desire to build something and, and, and take it from there. Um, so, yeah. How do we instill the responsibility that you have into other people? You know, I have found that the, the, how I have found with my businesses sure. and, and how I work um, is that when something means something to me, um, sleep becomes negotiable and you really sure. put your, your all into it. And, mm-hmm. and I, I, I can clearly see you found what, you know, your purpose is in life, I yeah. dare say. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, what happens to, again, going back to the blind generation, the people who don't have that what we have? Because you are not only an anomaly, but you're like a twice anomaly because you have taken it upon yourself then to, to continue perpetuating mm-hmm. the change, even though you, um, I'm, I'm going to use the very loose term of, sure. uh, you know, have a silver spoon in your mouth, yeah. you know, where mm-hmm. you were privileged to have parents who mm-hmm. had done the work that they needed to do for you to be in that position. Um, yet you still have the drive of someone who is sort of, Ascending to that yeah. uh, What do we do To then replicate that Because for me I refuse to believe that um, With all the black people Who are driving Range Rovers In Johannesburg 
that if we took one one of them, just mm. one each in the family of Range Rovers that they sure. drive, and asked them to put the expertise in the table, because again, a Range Rover is mm-hmm. two point eight million rand, just mm-hmm. break it. So um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you yeah. need you need tires of twenty thousand rand. The tires. Yeah, sure. Don't, don't I mean, any even trying to talk about the insurance. Yeah. Um, yeah. So clearly, you can afford. To, to to the conversation with you, the money is, is in a different stratosphere altogether. Yeah. So if we can take that one percent and make it work in our favor, why aren't they doing it? What do we do to transplant your responsibility, uh, your 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 ambition uh, to to see the change into everyone else? Yeah, I mean, um, translation of ambition is a, is a, is a, you need an infrastructure. I mean, it's yeah. a big it's a it's a big move to try and put it in place. Uh, <clears throat> to be honest. Uh, if I were to just leave it, I wouldn't even start that conversation uh, because it's just such a big job. Mm. It, 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 it requires the education. You've got to change the culture. You've got to remove them from the current environment, build a completely separate environment yeah. where you're hammering down, like the Spartans. I mean, a lot, uh, the Spartan, uh, um, uh, Spartan. Um, it's not a tribe, it's a nation, yeah. which is part of the Greek nation. Yeah. Um, you know, they they had their own environment. They were an independent state, separate from the Greek uh, uh, parliament, etc. They were independent, and I mean, those guys were hardcore. Um, they were a warrior race. Yeah. So I mean, they were so committed to the mission of being warriors that children that had birth defects were thrown away. Yeah. Killed. Thrown away. No, you know. So so there's a pile. There was a pile of dead bones, and bo- that's how committed they were to being Cause, who they yeah. are. Now. Um, I'm not saying we need to be on that level. Let's 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 not. Um, I mean, there are a lot of great people that are, are suffering from f- uh, severe um, diseases. I mean, I forgot yeah. the scientist, the the, the uh, Steve Steve Hawkins yeah. uh, of of our time. He wouldn't exist in the in the Spartan community. Okay, um, so I feel like there are there is value from people that have suffer from disabilities, etc. Yeah. But I feel that in our in our time. Um, it's up to the few and the and the many. I think even a step in the right direction is what we're doing here today yeah. by having this conversation that two or three people or that four people will hear and they will do something. Because at the end of the day, we need one person or a group of people, a small group that's going to say, we're committing to this and we're going to move this thing forward. In any company, I'm sure you've experienced this as well. When it's crunch time, the employees are under the table. Uh, or they've left and they went home. You've got to face paying the rent. Yeah. You've got to face. Yeah. Um, at, it's you the last point of call. So I feel like we need some soldiers, and I'm willing to be, uh, and I'm, I'm committing to be, at least the one in my opinion that's going to drive this thing. Yeah. And God forbid something happened to me. Hopefully someone would have seen this interview, seen what I'm trying to do, and they can pick it up. We didn't know what, what to ask for because we sort of had the niggling feeling that something isn't right. Sure. I should be doing something. I am restless. All you need to do is go into Twitter yeah, and just put something out today. I put a, a, a tweet out this morning about, you know, when times are dark, um, it's, struggle is great. It's good for you to struggle so sure. you can see, uh, you know, yeah. who's going to be around to support you. Mm-hmm. And I had an onslaught of people coming in telling me that, you know, struggle as a virtue is not desirable, yeah. which is true. You know, why do we need to suffer for you to know what's right or wrong? But what I meant is, you know, we, we, we are so ready to fight that sometimes we misplace our energies. Exactly. Um, and we now need mm-hmm. to start fight, finding exactly those things because I believe 50% of the fights happening between the EFF and the ANC are because of that. Mm-hmm. They want to say something but the lexicon doesn't exist in their minds just yet because they don't know where to put it. Sure. And the fight between the EFF and not because you know, I'm part political or anything but the fight will continue to, to, to go on because sure. it's, you've got generations of people. Mm-hmm. The ANC is older. You've got the mm-hmm. EFF which is younger. University graduates who have gone to university of their free will usually sure. find it by themselves and therefore the ideologies are very different. Of course. And mm-hmm. it is the same issue we have across corporate South Africa. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got a, a CEO who's sitting at 65 who has to deal with a born free or even worse, uh, someone who's 19 coming into the office sure. and the generational gap is massive. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so the questions we need to answer and ask are so varied and different that actually sometimes it's getting the question out sure. for us to even start to to, 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 mm-hmm. to interrogate it. So I think you've done the a, a, a major part of the work and I also love the fact that it's open. Sure. It doesn't it doesn't prescribe to me what the questions should be no. and it also needs me to be involved. You mm-hmm. ask the people on the ground what they want to hear which also makes it very difficult for those who are going to answer the questions. Oh, of course. Because mm-hmm. I'm going to be a, a, a lot I'm, I'm slightly afraid for you. Yeah. Uh, 
whoever will be doing the answering. Sure. Where can I get hold of the document? How do I become part of the of, 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 of the movement? Mm-hmm. Where do I get hold of you? Where do I book you to speak? What do we do to continue moving forward? Okay. Yeah, so I think in terms of moving things forward, uh, we have a site we, we, which will be up uh, by Monday. Okay. It's called cheeseboy.coza. Okay. That's it. Cheese boy is exactly the way you uh, spell it. Uh, those of you that uh, have model C education. That's a cheese boy. <laughs> cheese boy. With an C-O-Z. S, not a Z. Yeah. So all, all the contact information, I don't hide my, I don't hide my number. It's on my LinkedIn or yeah. all, all my social media. Uh, you can email me direct. Um, so yeah, if you just search, type on Google, Yummy Swana, my LinkedIn profile will come up immediately. Yeah. All my contact information is there. So the publication um, will be ready in March 2018. Okay. Uh, we are starting the, the, the shooting process um, in August um, and the research process also in August. So, you know, we are in full, full uh, fully fledged production um, and then we are doing pre-sales right now. Now, but this is this is the big portion and this is why it's targeted at the elite. Um, the, each copy. So, we, uh, and I need to explain the value um, at, what, at the price point. Yeah. So, the, the value of the book is that it's a coffee table book. This is not um, a reading book. It's not okay. supposed to sit not on a the novel. shelf. It's not a novel. It's not supposed to sit on the shelf. It's meant to be a, 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 a piece of beauty that you're supposed to display in your home. Yeah. I would love it if people even just framed it and it was never read because yeah. the imagery of the cover is enough. Yeah. So uh, and, and is this what I'm looking at? No, that's not the finalized cover, but it will it, look similar to that. Okay, so we've maybe, done the test shoot already. So maybe maybe let me let me let me paint a picture. It is what looks like the drawing room in Buckingham Palace. Yeah. Um, it, well, it will be a black person there. Uh, yeah. Instead of oh, oh, okay. Uh-huh. Oh, same. <laughs> that that does make it a little different. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but it's this beautiful, ornate, sort of well decorated, um, almost Victorian mm-hmm. um, drawing room with this big chaise ta- uh, chairs and a huge oak table. I'm assuming mm-hmm. it looks like someone's office but someone really really affluent mm-hmm. um, someone really 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 affluent um, and there's a gentleman who will be black who is sitting on the table looking out sort of into the camera yeah 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 so that's that's the that's the imagery and that's the imagery of the cheese boy ah I see that's the cheese boy ah. looking at you no this is not even cheese this is brie yeah like camembert. 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 camembert 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 oh yeah uh, it gives me memories of the first time I had uh uh, so called the cheese and wine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was like, it's not yeah. Gouda and yeah. Cheddar. Yeah. What, are the, what are these other yeah. guys? Who are these? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> In Don Lem Danam. You know, like our parents would say, with brie, it's like uh, blue cheese, excuse me. Yeah. It's like rotten, you know. In Don Lem. Anyway. In my fruit pagat. Yeah, get yeah. me fired this one. This yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I mean, um, you know, that's the concept, and, and, and really. Um, so yeah, so just if, uh, so it's going to be a really high quality book, super qu- high quality, and it's coming with a, f- a complete documentary series, which will be the interview portion, yeah. which is video content, um, and and the price point is going to be five thousand bucks. Five thousand South African rand. Five thousand South African rand. What is that in dollars? Uh, that's about uh, four hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. B- about four hundred and fifty. Okay. So so that's the price point. But I mean, if when we do sell it uh, in the US, we're gonna sell it at five hundred five hundred dollars flat. Okay. And five thousand just to make it easy. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, for the rest of our friends on the continent. Um, of course. That you know we, we don't deal in rand. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So so yeah, that will be there, and we 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 have, um we're moving, you know, directly into pre sales now. Yeah. So as of as of date, we've sold fifty six. Yeah. Okay. That's good. So five thousand times fifty six. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So listen, uh, I think if if uh, as good as it sounds, as good as it sounds, um, I think the price point also because of who you're targeting it to, exactly. um, and and the, the various platforms will be on yeah. is, is is quite important. People buy paintings for less. Exactly. For more rather. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, so so yeah, that's that's basically what we're trying to do. This, this, this is Trans Africa Radio. Radio.